Welcome to Drugs Decode. In today's video, we will explore the pharmacology of antifungal agents, how they work, their clinical uses, and key differences among them. Let's get started. Fungal infections are common and can range from mild skin conditions to life-threatening systemic infections. Antifungal agents work by targeting fungal structures or metabolic pathways, leading to fungal death or growth inhibition. Understanding their mechanisms is crucial for effective treatment. Antifungal agents are classified into different groups based on their mechanism of action. The main classes include polyene antifungals, amphotericin B, nistatin, azole antifungals, imidazoles, ketoconazole, clotrimazole, triazoles, fluconazole, itraconazole, voriconazole, echinocandins, caspofungin, micafungin, anidulafungin, alilamines, terbinafine, naftafine, butinafine, others, flucytosine, griseofulvin. Each class has a unique target and clinical application, which we will discuss in detail. First, let's look at polyene antifungals, which include amphotericin B and nistatin. These drugs work by binding to ergosterol, which is an essential component of fungal cell membranes. This binding creates pores, holes, in the membrane, increasing permeability. This leads to leakage of essential intracellular ions, K+, Mg2+, causing fungal cell lysis and death. Unlike human cells, fungal cells contain ergosterol instead of cholesterol, making polyenes selective for fungi. Key Features of Polyenes Now, let's look at amphotericin B in detail. Amphotericin B is one of the most powerful antifungals, but it comes with significant toxicity. Here's what you need to know. Highly protein-bound, accumulates in liver, spleen, and kidneys. Given IV, due to poor oral absorption. Slow elimination, with a half-life of 15 days. Liposomal formulations help reduce nephrotoxicity. Amphotericin B, used for severe systemic fungal infections. Nistatin, used topically or orally for superficial fungal infections like oral candidiasis and cutaneous candidiasis. Now, let's discuss azole antifungals, a broad class of antifungal drugs used for both superficial and systemic infections. Azoles are classified into two groups, imidazole and triazoles. Azoles inhibit lanosterol 14 alpha dimethylase, a fungal CYP450 enzyme involved in ergosterol synthesis, which reduces ergosterol production, leading to a weakened fungal cell membrane. Finally, fungal cell integrity is disrupted, causing fungi static or fungicidal effects. This action is depending on drug concentration. Look at this table, which describes the pharmacokinetic properties of each drug from azoles, where we can conclude that Fluconazole has excellent oral absorption and is renally excreted, making it the only azole that requires dose adjustments in renal failure. Itraconazole and voriconazole are metabolized by the liver and have significant drug interactions. Ketoconazole requires an acidic environment for absorption, so it should not be taken with proton pump inhibitors. Let's summarize the important clinical uses of azole antifungals. Fluconazole is the drug of choice for candidiasis but does not cover aspergillus. Itraconazole is preferred for endemic fungal infections, histoplasma, blastomyces. Voriconazole is the first-line treatment for invasive aspergillosis. Posiconazole is used for mucormycosis and prophylaxis in high-risk immunocompromised patients. Now, let's talk about echinocandins, a newer class of antifungals that target the fungal cell wall instead of the cell membrane. Echinocandins are a class of antifungal drugs that inhibit fungal cell wall synthesis, making them highly effective for invasive candida and aspergillus infections. They are generally well-tolerated and have fewer drug interactions compared to azoles. Examples of echinocandins. Caspofungin, micafungin, anidulafungin. Echinocandins inhibit beta-1, 3, Glucan synthase, an enzyme essential for synthesizing beta-1, 3, glucan, a key component of the fungal cell wall. This leads to cell wall disruption, osmotic instability, and fungal cell death. Echinocandins are fungicidal against candida species and fungi static against aspergilla species. Unlike azoles and polyenes, echinocandins do not target ergosterol, making them less toxic to human cells. 
Here are the key points from the pharmacokinetics of echinocandins table. Route of administration. Echinocandins are only available as four formulations because they are not absorbed orally. This limits their use to hospital settings for serious fungal infections. Distribution. They have good tissue penetration, making them effective for systemic candida and aspergillus infections. However, they have poor CNS penetration, meaning they are not useful for fungal meningitis. Metabolism. Hepatic metabolism via non-CYP pathways, meaning fewer drug interactions compared to azoles. Caspofungin undergoes some hydrolysis and is affected by liver dysfunction. Excretion. Primarily excreted through feces, with minimal renal clearance. No renal dose adjustments needed, making them safer in kidney disease compared to amphotericin B. Half-life. Caspofungin, 9 to 12 hours. Micofungin, 14 hours. Anidulofungin, 24 to 48 hours. Anidulofungin has the longest half-life allowing for once daily dosing. Echinocandins are only available as IV formulations because they are not absorbed orally. This limits their use to hospital settings for serious fungal infections. Here are the key points from the clinical uses of echinocandins table. Caspofungin, first-line treatment for invasive candidiasis, including candidemia, candida bloodstream infections. Used as salvage therapy for invasive aspergillosis in patients who do not respond to voriconazole or amphotericin B. Micofungin. Used for esophageal candidiasis, a common fungal infection in immunocompromised patients. Frequently used for prophylaxis in hematopoietic stem cell transplant patients to prevent fungal infections in high-risk individuals. Anidulofungin. Effective for invasive candidiasis and candidemia similar to caspofungin, has a long half-life, allowing once-daily dosing, improving patient compliance in hospital settings. Allilamines are a class of antifungal drugs that primarily target dermatophytic, skin, hair, and nail infections by inhibiting ergosterol synthesis, a key component of fungal cell membranes. Examples of allilamines. Turbinifine, most commonly used. Naftifine, topical use. Butenafine, topical use. Allilamine inhibits squalene epoxidase, an enzyme in the fungal ergosterol synthesis pathway. It prevents the conversion of squalene to lanosterol, leading to depletion of ergosterol, which weakens the fungal cell membrane, and toxic accumulation of squalene, which is lethal to fungal cells. Allilamine has fungicidal effect against dermatophytes, fungi static effect against some yeasts. Here are the key points from the pharmacokinetics of allilamines table. Absorption. Turbinifine, oral and topical. Well absorbed orally but undergoes first pass metabolism, reducing its bioavailability. Still effective because it accumulates in keratin-rich tissues like skin and nails. Naftifine and butenafine, topical only. Minimal systemic absorption, meaning they act locally on the skin without significant bloodstream levels. This makes them safer with fewer systemic side effects. Distribution. Turbinifine. Highly lipophilic, so it accumulates in skin, nails, and adipose tissue, making it ideal for onychomycosis and dermatophyte infections. Naftifine and butenafine. Stay localized at the application site, ensuring effective action on superficial fungal infections. Metabolism. Turbinifine undergoes hepatic metabolism via CYP450 enzymes, primarily CYP2D6. This leads to potential drug interactions with medications metabolized by CYP2D6, e.g., beta blockers, antidepressants, naftifine, and butenafine. Minimal metabolism, reducing concerns about drug interactions. Excretion, turbinifine, 70% excreted via kidneys meaning dose adjustments may be needed in renal impairment. Some excretion through feces. Naftifine and butenafine. Not systemically excreted, making them safer for patients with kidney issues. Half-life. Turbinifine. 200 to 400 hours due to its accumulation in nails and skin. This allows shorter treatment courses, 6 weeks for fingernails, 12 weeks for toenails. Naftifine and butenafine. Short half-life meaning they need frequent application but pose low risk of systemic effects. 
Oral terbinafine is the preferred treatment for onychomycosis, nail fungal infections, due to its ability to penetrate nails and persist for weeks. Topical formulations, naftifine, butinafine, are effective for mild skin infections but are not suitable for nail infections. Flucytosine, 5-FC, is a pyrimidine analog antifungal used primarily for severe systemic fungal infections, often in combination with other antifungals. It works by inhibiting fungal DNA and RNA synthesis, making it highly effective against Cryptococcus and Candida species. Flucytosine incorporates into fungal RNA, leading to defective protein synthesis. Good CNS penetration makes flucytosine useful for cryptococcal meningitis. Combination therapy with amphotericin B is the gold standard for cryptococcal meningitis. Griseofulvin is an oral antifungal used mainly for dermatophytic infections, tinea infections, of the skin, hair, and nails. It works by disrupting fungal cell division, making it effective against slow-growing dermatophytes. It works by disrupting fungal cell division, making it effective against slow-growing dermatophytes. They are fungi-static, inhibits growth rather than killing fungi. Griseofulvin deposits in keratin-rich tissues, skin, hair, nails, protecting new growth from infection. I know it is very difficult to remember all the notes. I give you some important key points from the notes, which should be known at least. Most antifungals target ergosterol, polyenes, azoles, or fungal cell walls, echinocandins. Amphotericin B is the most potent antifungal but causes nephrotoxicity and infusion reactions. Fluconazole is first line for candidiasis and cryptococcal meningitis, crosses blood-brain barrier. Echinocandins, caspofungin, mycofungin, are first line for invasive candidiasis and have fewer drug interactions. Voriconazole is the drug of choice for aspergillosis but causes visual disturbances. Terbinafine, alilamine, is best for onychomycosis and dermatophyte infections, but requires liver monitoring. Flucytosine is always used in combination with amphotericin B to prevent resistance, causes bone marrow suppression. Griseofulvin disrupts fungal mitosis, used for tinea capitis, but has long treatment duration and CYP450 interactions. Azoles inhibit CYP enzymes leading to significant drug interactions and QD prolongation. Echinocandins are IV only, safer in renal impairment, but ineffective for cryptococcal infections. I hope this video helped you understand the antifungal pharmacology. If you found this video helpful, make sure to like, share, and subscribe to Drugs Decode for more pharmacology lessons. See you in the next video.